Hey guys, Pat here. What makes a fan? I, I don't mean a fan like a fan. I, I mean like a fan as in fanboy. A, a, a fan, somebody who loves something completely, deeply, through years, and uh, grows with it. It means something to them. You know, they get called fanboys or fangirls or, uh, you know, all sorts of things. It, it's, it's what we know. It, it applies to comic books, TV shows, movies, music. All sorts of things. You can be a fanboy with, with politics. But I'm going to be very specific. I'm talking about, in general, geek culture, uh, media, Hollywood, uh, film, stuff like that. Stories. Fiction. Uh, th the one thing that's been making me really curious lately is, for years in my life, whenever I have not liked something that was part of a major franchise be it Transformers, or X-Men, or, or any Marvel film, or any space film, anything based off a major franchise that people had a lot of love for. When I haven't enjoyed something in that franchise, or, or this thing that means a lot to, to people, I get, I get the same replies just about every time. You're a hater, and you were never really a fan. I get that one all the time. And I kind of forgotten about this through the years. This has become such a, a pet peeve of mine for a long time. It's like, why do people always say I'm not a fan when I don't like this one thing? So I was a fan when I liked everything else, but I'm not a fan because I don't like this thing that you like. And I, you know, I just assumed if somebody calls you a hater or you were never a fan, they're just, they're just upset that you disagree with their opinion. And they're trying to rationalize it to themselves why your opinion's this way and why you're wrong in a sense. It's like, well, they were never really fans. I kind of let this go for a long time. I, I really just kind of dropped this thing because that was like, I don't go fight on Joe Blow or IMDb forms anymore. They don't even have movie forms. Those movie forms aren't even around anymore. But recently I've made a few movie videos. Um, and if you don't know, most of my channel has been political content or comedic content, satirical content. For the last few months and then I started to go more into things that I cared about passionately that I love that I was a fan of um, like Game of Thrones like sci-fi films and action films and, and animation and all that stuff and then I started to learn something it was so strange I thought the the worst most negative comments and and, and just negativity and, and toxic behavior was gonna come from the political content I really did and for the most part it really hasn't been that bad I mean, there's been obviously bad moments, but for the most part, it's been pretty nice. Unfortunately, I was a fool in, in even going near the Alien franchise or Star Wars or any of that stuff. I just had no idea how uh, in how angry people get. I, I was going to say insane, but it's not insane because I've gotten angry. I've gotten angry when people talk shit about Christopher Nolan's Batman movies. You know, they're like, hey, the Dark Knight sucks. You know, I've heard that. You know, I, I get it. But at the same time, I would never say that person's not a fan of Batman because they don't like The Dark Knight. See, th this happened to me last year. I was on the Ghostbusters fans uh, page on, on Facebook. It was a Facebook group, Ghostbusters fans. And I loved it. I loved it. And uh, they didn't like that I was so negative on the new movie, the, the moderators of the page. They didn't like I would, and that I would point out how it didn't do well at the box office. They would try to argue with me that it actually made money, and I would show them I would show them the articles from Deadline and Hollywood Reporter and be like, no, this thing's losing money. Um, and they said to me one day, they said, you're not a real Ghostbusters fan. They said, what do you like in Ghostbusters? I said, well, I like the first movie. It's one of my favorites. I think the second one's derivative, but I still like it. I love the co the cartoon, the real Ghostbusters. Um, I, I've owned, uh, you know, T-shirts, uh, toys. Um, I, I like the new video game that came out a few years ago that was like a third movie. I said, I like all that stuff. And they said, no, you have to like everything to be a fan. And they blocked me from the Ghostbusters fan page on Facebook. I got blocked because I was negative about last year's Ghostbusters. And their reasoning was because I wasn't a fan. Now we fast forward now to my Alien video, which currently has 21,000 hits. And mostly the comments and the discussion's been nice. I'm not acting like this, but occasionally you'll get that comment. Well, you were never really a fan of the franchise to begin with. Okay, so because I don't like Ridley Scott's new prequel films that are new films that were made in the 2000s, I was never really a fan of Alien from 1979 or Aliens or Alien 3. I wasn't actually a fan of any of those films because I don't like these, these new movies. 
And because Ridley Scott's making them, because I don't like them, I'm not a fan, because Ridley Scott love equals fandom. This problem is a George Lucas issue. Whenever you criticize George Lucas, the people that are very forgiving to the prequels and love it, they'll always come back to you with, well, you're just too harsh on George Lucas, okay? You don't understand. And they try to add this complexity to the prequels that doesn't exist. Let me make a point here. If you love a movie or hate a movie, you can add things or take things away from it to make it good or bad depending on your experience. If I love a film... I can make up so much shit and even use sources from the filmmakers and everything to make it sound like a brilliant movie. It's something I have to point out to people all the time. Just so you, just because you can explain what a film is thematically and make it sound brilliant and explain all this depth to every shot and every line of dialogue, that doesn't make it a good film to the other person watching it. And they can do the same for a film they like that you don't like. I can make a bad movie sound brilliant. I can make a good movie sound like crap. It, it, it's how you break it down. It's not that hard to do. And people seem to have an issue with criticism. They seem to think that it is an internet trend of hate or, or, or being negative or cynical. Pauline Kell was one of the most famous critics going back to the 60s, 70s, and she was insanely negative, hated some great films, legendary films. Criticism is healthy and part of being a fan. If you're not critical of the bad stuff they do, they'll never learn to make the good stuff. If people weren't so negative on George Lucas and the prequels, he would have never got the courage to eventually go forward with selling Star Wars to Disney, which has received much better critical reception and doing huge box stuff. Now, I'm more mixed on these new Star Wars films, and a lot of people are saying, I'm not a fan now, I never was a fan. So apparently I didn't like the original Star Wars trilogy because I don't love Force Awakens. You get this all the time. And I always try to say to someone, well, hey, Batman's my favorite superhero. I don't like Batman and Robin. Me not liking that movie doesn't negate my fandom. Also, because that movie bombed, it didn't do well. It killed Batman for years. And then we got Batman Begins, which was great. And now Batman's back and huge. Batman's been big for like 10, 50, I mean, bigger than ever. Batman's huge now. The Arkham games, uh, Gotham's a hit TV show. There's just so much Batman stuff now. So, I, I don't get what people mean, or if you don't like a Marvel movie, you're not a fan of the comics or Marvel. I, I, I don't, I've always been very confused by this whole sentiment, because to me, it, and I'm not trying to attack people who say this stuff, but it always feels like they're trying to justify their difference in opinion by uh, putting you down to a level where you're not at the level of them as a fan. Like, they understand the franchise, or this film, or this piece of art more than you do, because they love it more than you do. You know, Game of Thrones is my favorite show on TV, and I get called a Game of Thrones fanboy all the time, and the reason is it's because I am, and the excuses I make for Game of Thrones, there's some bad stuff D&D, the showrunners have done on the show, stuff that I didn't really like, or there are plot holes and issues throughout all of the show, and people point them out to me, and I defend them, I make these really elaborate good excuses, I feel, for things like, well, that this is thematically why it works, it's, it's more important in this sense. You can do that. I've heard this with everything. People do this to me with Lost, The Sopranos, Battlestar Galactica. It's common shit, man. People debate quality. They'll debate if that had a deeper meaning and if it worked or not. It's not just what the attempt was. It was execution. I had a conversation on it recently with a guy, and it was a very nice conversation. We weren't, like, fighting or anything, but he was trying to say to me that the original trilogy was just as cheesy and had bad dialogue and bad acting and a bunch of plot holes and any flaw that the new films had, it had. And my argument was, well, you're saying that the attempt of what George Lucas wanted to do in the original films, make a film for younger audiences and everyone, uh, is what he, was what they're trying to do now. I don't disagree with that, but we're ignoring execution. Okay? Like, l let's look at this. If, if I want to make a movie in my 20s for a certain audience and I make a great movie, that's cool. If I want to make that same movie for a same kind of for the same kind of audience in my 40s and it sucks, that means I didn't execute it as well. That's the difference. It's it's not my I don't have a problem with George Lucas or Ridley Scott or these filmmakers what they're trying to do with these franchises. I don't have an issue with them attempting to tell prequel stories and expand the universe. That doesn't bother me. I'm not arguing what they're trying to do. I have an issue with the execution. I don't like the acting. I don't like the dialogue. I don't like the direction. I don't like those things. Those things bother me. We could debate those things all day, but ultimately they're subjective. And our fandom isn't some battle. 
you know, uh, uh, just hating on George Lucas. It's I, I, I've had at least 10 people uh, unsubscribe from me or block me because I made a joke or, an, or I insulted Zack Schneider or J.J. Abrams. And they said, oh, you're just a sheep critic or you just follow the bandwagon of hate. It's like, so every time you say something negative about a filmmaker that's popular to hate on, you're just jumping on a bandwagon. It can't be that that filmmaker just kind of sucks. Like, do you think people make fun of Michael Bay because they misunderstand the Transformers films? Or is it that the Transformers films actually suck and people are right about them? Now, you could like those movies. That's fine. But people aren't misunderstanding, you know, five brilliant Transformers films. I've seen the first four movies. I'm not seeing the fifth one. Uh, after the fourth one, I just was like, I'm not going to go see another Transformers. But I even hear that. They go, you were never a Transformers fan. Dude, I love the cartoon show. I love the toys. The cartoon show had better storytelling. It was more coherent than the damn movies. The movies are insane. They're three hour long. They're three They're three hours long and pretentious as hell and, and, and fucking so lazy with the comedy and the characterization. But breaking this down, it's always this thing where, you know, people seem to think that their standard of being a fan... What, what being a fan is to them, what a character means to them, what Batman means. To th this, this is something you get with James Bond. You'll always argue with people about what James Bond is and how Ian Fleming interpreted him. I, and this argument I still have to this day. We've had so many James Bond films and stuff, and you'll still people say, well, well, this is what closer to what this was or that. They have their own feeling. They don't realize that it's their James Bond is their James Bond. Nobody, There's not a definitive James Bond. It's your James Bond that's James Bond. And that's what I try to explain to people. I'm not saying that I don't love Ghostbusters because I don't like these new Ghostbusters. I don't like this movie. I don't dislike Ghostbusters or the idea of Ghostbusters. I don't suddenly dislike proton packs and all that shit. I still think it's cool. I like those things. It's like Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man. I didn't like the Amazing Spider-Man reboot. I hope the Homecoming movie's a lot better because I like Spider-Man. I want a good Spider-Man movie. I don't want bad movies. I don't go into these movies. I don't watch these TV shows. I don't do these things to hate them. I don't go sit down and pay $10 to see a new Star Wars film. I, I'm not cynical about Kathleen Kennedy firing these guys and bringing them on Howard because I want the movie to suck. I'm cynical because that's fucking weird. Why hire two filmmakers and for, for who are known for doing improvisation and comedy... Why hire them to make a movie, and then when they do that very thing, improvise and do comedy, why do you wait till there's three weeks of filming left to fire them? Why not fire them early into filming, and then you could replace them early on? Instead, you, you're going to have, like, all this footage shot by these. It's just weird. That was my critic, and it's, it's just continuing over and over. You were never a fan. You're a hater. You just hate these guys. You're cynical. You never understood the franchise. And they try to show you things. They try to send you articles or videos that give this new meaning and depth they say well look this guy breaks down and gives a deep analysis to you know prometheus or the force awakens or phantom menace and i go dude i can do that with any movie i can make alien 3 sound like a masterpiece to you when i start breaking down what they wanted to do with that movie that doesn't mean you're gonna like that movie all of a sudden chris stuckman brought this up actually because he did an alien 3 review with a guy and he said to the guy he's like hey you're explaining cool things about this movie but i still don't like it with you explaining those cool things that like it doesn't change your feeling your experience while watching it okay because once again it's it's execution and feeling and people are going to react differently you know I, I i what i think is bad acting or bad dialogue or bad characters or bad isn't the same for everyone and there's no universal rule with each movie about what works and doesn't work you can't just we can compare them which is fine but it, it's just what it is they constantly make these things they constantly change and not everything's good this idea to these people seems to be to be a fan you have to think everything's good or at least watchable because you love the franchise so much but i feel like if you love something you got to be willing to hurt it sometimes or let it go you know i've been in plenty bad relationships where i love the person and i had to get out of them that's how i was with the alien franchise it's like i can't be in this bad relationship anymore i just can't put up with it and uh it's it's not it's not blind hatred or just complete cynicism or ego it's just feeling you know it's like hey i don't dig these movies man i can't make myself like movies i don't like i'm not going to magically make myself like these movies and how am i not a fan if i like these other movies and then i like this if i like this batman comic but then i don't like batman tim burton's batman i'm not a batman fan even though i read all i've read every i've, I've seriously i've read every detective's comic like, I haven't read everything of Batman, every graphic novel, but Detective Comics, Batman, I've read every issue. 
I mean, I, I have I have a thorough reading background in Batman. It's like, well, how am I not a fan? I've spent hours. I didn't like every comic book I read of Batman. You know, there's some that sucked. You know, not all of them are good. Not everything's always good. It's just it's just something I've never quite understood. What makes you a fan? I always thought it was just liking something. But for some people, it seems to be a lifestyle, and maybe that's what it is. Maybe you have to always be a fan. Maybe it has to be something where you have to be a parent and be forgiving to everything that happens with the children. I don't feel that way. I feel like you're not raising your children well then. I think you have to teach them lessons. You know, I have a Batman tattoo. I have a Spider-Man tattoo. I have a Superman tattoo, a Daredevil tattoo. I have tattoos of all sorts of things. You know, I plan on getting a Darth Vader tattoo, some Smash Brothers tattoos. There's all sorts of shit I love. Speed Racer. But I can admit things fuck up. You know, I love the first Matrix by the Wachowskis. I hate the sequels. I think the sequels suck. That doesn't mean I don't I don't like The Matrix. I still enjoy watching the first Matrix movie. It's still a fun, good movie. I just don't like what they took the franchise. So I just want to get that point across without d dragging this out too long here. Don't, don't just assume because somebody disagrees with you or doesn't like something, they're no longer a fan or they don't love this thing or they never were a fan at least. They may not be a fan anymore, but don't act like that their fandom didn't mean something originally because they still paid the money to go see those things, supported it, bought the merchandise, and contributed just as much as you did. I've bought just as much Star Wars shit as any of you out there. I've bought just as many toys and posters and, and stupid stuff that I didn't need because I love Star Wars. Okay, I've been caught up in the capitalist, you know, machine as well. I love it. I love buying stuff that I enjoy. I, every time I go to the store, I see this Game of Thrones lamp with like a sword in it. And I'm like, God damn, I want that Game of Thrones lamp, you know, but I can't get it. It's like $300. Um, and it's stupid. I, that'd be so silly for me to spend 300 bucks on a lamp because it's Game of Thrones. But I would do it. It's like a Christmas story. It means something to me, that damn lamp. Um, it... <laughs> But if somebody doesn't like Game of Thrones, I don't think that they're not a fan of the, or the the earlier seasons or the books or what have you. There's just so much to this. There's so many variables that it's weird that people think they get to dictate. I'm not saying dictate quality because that's debatable. What you like and I like it can be different. I mean dictate what, what makes somebody qualified to even discuss the things or or how they approach them. It's, it's a very simplistic view of being a fan and criticism and and breaking things down and 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 giving things an analysis and really looking at it that's 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 what makes movies and art so much fun is that there's such a personal feeling with it because you add so much to the experience it's not just someone else it's what you bring to it and how it affects you but everyone seems to think that it has to affect a lot well not everyone but a lot of people seems seem to think you have to be affected universally in the same way and it just doesn't work that way. It's never been that way. And that's why a lot of things we love go in hiatuses or decline and then come back. And it's a back and forth. It's a struggle. Because how can one thing be consistently great forever? It's tough. It's tough to be consistently great forever. You know, if you're a Doctor Who fan and you're a fan just of the new series and you didn't watch the old shows, that doesn't mean you don't like Doctor Who. So what I'm getting at here, it's always this this debate of like my version of Sherlock Holmes, my version of Indiana Jones, my version of this movie that is the correct one. And uh, it's not going to get us anywhere. That's cynicism. That's negativity because you're assuming that person is so negative and blind and biased that they can't make a make an opinion that isn't completely clouded with hate. And that's not true. That's not true. That's you just assuming that. That's like me saying you're just a blind fanboy that's sucking the dick of these directors and these franchises. And I don't think that. I think you genuinely went and enjoyed those things you saw and you like them. But the problem is because I don't like them, you all of a sudden want to come in with this like, well, fuck you. Why, do you. why are you even talking about this and complaining about this stuff? It's like because I want to express my opinion because I enjoy talking about this stuff. If you don't enjoy it, don't listen. That's all I'm saying. You don't have to. That's cool. I'm not forcing you to listen to what I think about this stuff or what I feel or what I say. I'm not forcing anyone. It's so strange that people think you're forcing them when you have a, 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 a opinion, a strong opinion, something that you're very, you know, adamant about. And they're like, well, how dare you? It's like, what? What? <laughs> you know, so just to wrap this up, I want to say being a fan to me is completely whatever you want it to be. There is no definitive fandom or what being a fan is. But we got to stop this bullshit of like, you get to decide, I get to decide, you this, that. 
all this crap. It's such a lazy argument. It's it's just it's just a it's just a straw man to try to destroy the other person's credibility. Don't do that. Argue your points for why it's good and look at what they said and explain to them maybe why you don't agree with them. Don't just tell them that that they never they never were part of it. They never were even in it. It makes you sound like a hipster or like like well fuck you. I was into this before everyone else jumped on the bandwagon. Come on, man. You can't be that way. Uh, cause, cause, you know, not everyone catches up to things immediately or they don't like thing at first, you know, your taste buds change, man. You know, you may like something in 10 years later and, or you may not like it. There's movies I used to love that I don't like now. Happens all the time. But tell me in the comments, what do you think about this? Have you ever had this experience in your life where someone's tried to like c completely destroy your fandom or credibility for talking about these things when you're just expressing an opinion? You're not like trying to control something or, or you know, be authoritarian with it. And uh, you ever been blocked from a place? I got blocked by the Ghostbusters fans for basically just saying I didn't like the new. It was crazy. But this this is what it is. I don't know. It's like people want to live in a bubble with this stuff that they don't want to hear any negative views on something. They may they don't want to acknowledge that there might be flaws because to them something's either perfect or not perfect and people people fall into the hate or love category. There's no middle ground where you can just think a movie's okay or eh. You know, like, people ask me about Force Awakens. It's like, I don't think it's a bad movie. I just think it's eh. I don't think it's a great movie either. That doesn't mean I hate it. I would never say it's a shitty film. Like, it's a bad, bad movie. I don't think it's a great movie either, though. But like I said, tell me what you think in the comments. Give me your experience. That's the best way I can explain it. I know you're going to say I'm just explaining basic bitch stuff. It's simplistic. But this is a topic I wanted to talk about because it's odd to me this is still a thing people say or this is still some kind of argument discussion with, with communities, with, with these big fan bases. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.